and it's an argument opening up a clear advantage in the closing stages. A breath of fresh air over fences is going to stay at the helm of the two mild offices. An argument by... Hi everyone and a very warm welcome. Yes, it's us again. It is the Fab Four, the usual suspects, and we call them various other things as well. Dave D, Dozy, Beaky, Mick and Titch. I know who Titch is. And uh, we're here <laughs> with the champ.ie podcast. Subscribe to it now if you haven't, because a lot of people have. It is the one thing that is moving even faster up than the rate of inflation is the number of subscribers to champ.ie. And of course, with the Chartland Festival coming up, you cannot afford to miss the words of wisdom that are uttered on this programme. We also have three guests on the programme tonight who are tipping winners for fun, or that's what it says here. But the fact they've been doing it for years and still have to do it to earn a living tells you all you need to know about their, their abilities. And of course, as we go through the programme tonight, remember at the end, the five cast, your chance to get involved. Subscribe, podcast, fi uh, podcast, and uh, the five. That is what you've got to do. We had two winners. Congratulations to Chris Hooten and David O'Brien last week. And uh, there'll be a winner tonight in the five casts as well. Or well, there will be come closer play on Saturday. So in no particular order, we have everybody's favourite journalist. A man who has turned wordsmithing into an art form. It would just help if he could spell a few of them. Ronan Groom from the Irish Field. The ubiquitous Mr. Thomas Coyle, trainer, box driver, washer upper, Walker and is. the founder, <laughs> and the man who always wears headphones. And I've never seen him wearing a tie, probably because he doesn't know how to tie one up. It's Barry Doyle. They are the three who will be for the next 25 minutes holding court on a weekend of racing. Going to concentrate on Saturday. Uh, in the UK, the big card at Kempton, which is last chance saloon for Cheltenham Trials. And we're also going to hear later from Jordan Gainford, who rides in the big race, the Bobby Joe, which is more a trial for Aintree and the Grand National with any second now in it than it is for the Cheltenham Festival. That's a, what seems to be a very wet fairy house, where it was, it was a bit of snow around when I left Ireland in the early hours of Thursday morning. But let us start with the first of the four big races at Kempton. And I'm going to do these in race card order. We said the first of them is off at 150, and it is the Coral Adonis Juvenile Hurdle. Some real hot Triumph Hurdle horses heading to Cheltenham already, most of them coming across the Irish Sea. Is there a serious domestic challenger? The favourite Knight Salute, who has won four from four for Milton Harris. And I suspect if he was with a better known trainer, although Milton's been around for years, He'd probably be even shorter. Now, who's going to go in first? Well, he was last through the doors of his first on the stage. Uh, your applause, please, for Mr. Ronan Groom. He's Who's muted himself. Help yourself, he's muted himself. Sorry. Let's try. So he's he lost his uh, thoughts of all his words. Try again. Ronan Groom, ladies and gentlemen. I was too busy looking up what ubi ubiquitous meant to, to realise that I'd muted myself. There. Get your act together, Groom. If you could spell it, it would help. Yeah, that was the problem. <laughs> uh, yeah, look, um, yeah, good race, good interesting race. It always is the Adonis. Uh, uh, the Nicholas horses make it make it very interesting. Uh, Pleasant Man and, and, and Rebo. Uh, Nicholas obviously won this with a couple of nice jubilers down the years, like Sarkander. Irish Saint Zubair, um, solo recently was a really impressive winner. So the market is uh, taking a liking to Pleasant Man. He used to be with Roger Charlton, useless, useful horse on the flat, um, and obviously having his first start here for Nichols, which you know looks looks like a big thrown into the deep end. But obviously Nichols has done it before with Solo, and maybe Pleasant Man has shown the right things. Maybe he, um, for me, probably hasn't not firing on all cylinders yet. Uh, the Nichols Yard. So we'll. Um, I, I wouldn't be that would be a negative for me still. I, I'm not sure he's back to full form. Um Knight Salute is a horse I, I do like. Um I, I think you're right, Mike. I think if he was trained by um Nichols or Dan Skelton or Nicky Henderson, he'd be uh, 
he'd be a bit shorter here. He'd he'd be closer to to six to four than nine to four. He seems to have, like that he has the the measure of impulsive one. He he beat him, taking weight off from earlier in the season, but then. He had a, a big weight swing uh, where I think he was conceding him weight and, and he beat him again. So just goes to show you that he's progressing very well. I think he sets the standard here, to be honest. Um, look, there's always one that could come out there. They're, they're, they're uh, lightly raced juveniles, so there's, there's one that could just pop out of nowhere or make a big jolt and improvement. I see Gary Moore has one in there as well, but Knight's Loop definitely sets the standard. And yeah, a ninth four seems to me like a fair enough price for for what he's done so far he's he's four out of four and he looks rock solid and of course the value of this is a triumph trial very limited because you it's hard to imagine two more different tracks than the right-handed sharp flat kempton uh with cheltenham and the hill which of course they christened the heartbreak hotel uh, and so um what do we make of these 11 um barry are you a night nice salute fan um, well, I've been giving Ronan stick on the, on, on the Monday show about nine salute. He put him up for the triumph hurdle, but it, he's a horse that's actually grown on me. I mean, I've watched back a couple of his runs. He's obviously has fi- t- form tied in very much, as Ronan said, with impulsive one. Um, he's four from four. Um, he's a course and distance winner. Um, it's hard to kind of disagree with Ronan, what Ronan has said here. And two to one um, may represent a, a, a bit of value. Look, he's, he's stepped forward, certainly. With every run this season, um, and if you look at his Doncaster run, he's he's obviously beaten the horse that I like for the Triumph Porticello. So um, it's it's rock solid form. Um, interesting um, when when he faced Impulsive One at Kempton uh, last time, he was it kind of took him a while to get going in the straight. Um, he shaped like more of a I suppose a stare. He hit the line pretty hard, um, but on his last start. Um, he seems to be travelling better through his races. Interesting comments from Milton Harris. Um, he's 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 workman like horse at home generally, um, but said his work was sexy uh, on the racing post. So um, midweek. So he's obviously coming here with a a big chance. Two to one maybe value. The one I did like. Um, you, you did mention the first thing you said there was there's eleven runners in the race. Um, Jane Williams has a couple of nice juveniles. One. Um, that I like going to the Boodles, um, Saint Seagal. Um, but the one the one she runs in here is Mocha Devasi. Hasn't won a race yet. Um, finished nine lines second uh, behind Pied Piper at Cheltenham at um on his last start, his third start. And he stepped forward. Um, he's a big raw sort of a four-year-old. I thought it was a much improved effort under Johnny Burke um, at Cheltenham um, and reverse the form with Forever William. So he could be a horse going in the right direction. He's six to one in here. And if I was going to have a bet, maybe without the Fav or possibly in each way, but I probably would come down on the side of Mocha Devasi. Um, I cannot see how impulsive one reverses the form. Um, pleasant man, not for me, um, coming here without a run, albeit Nichols and the McNeils. Um, McNeil's won it last year, Nichols the year before, and Nichols has a good record. Um, so we, we don't know what, I suppose it is an unknown, but um, do you know what? I'll take a chance um, each way on Mocha, the Vassy, six to one. Mr. Coyle, three newcomers in here. Any of them catch your eye, or are you um, that form? I saw you blowing the dust off it just before yeah, look, you went on there. Uh, has yeah. that come up with the answer here? No, look, the. Milton's horse d- deserves to be favoured on what he's done, all right. But I don't think it's going to be as easy for him this time. I do think Impulsive One has improved. I think he will get closer. I know we've said that he's given him weight and given him beaten already. But I was impressed the way he won in Musselburgh the last day. He beat a pair of John McConnell horses, one of them which is entered for Nace on Sunday. Um, but he done it well that day, um, so I think he will get close to him. I think he'll give him a race, and I think Nicky's horses are probably in a little bit better form as well. Um, but I actually, another each way horse I picked out in it is um, Lucy Adams, um, Greystone. Um, it just the form ties through one horse of Ian Williams, um, San Raquir, um, both Knight Salute and Greystone have beaten him. And Greystone beaten by seven lengths and Knight Salute only beaten by two. Um, okay, on official ratings, he is a bit defined. He's getting five pound off him, which leaves him five pound fine in this race. 
But this horse would be, he'd be going for a four-timer at Bar Fallen at the last in Ludlow two runs ago. So um, he's not a bad horse. To, not many horses can put up a sequence like that. He was three lengths clear when he fell at the last. Um, so he should, be, he should be going for a four-timer. I think at nine to one, he, he's, he's the value bet in the race going each way. So when we go to the second of the featured races, and this is the Coral Pendle, Pornicles has won this 11 times. And he has picked door here, of course, is a previous winner of uh, the big hurdle race at Newbury. Um, but he and Manella Dreams both have to give weight away to their rivals, but they are the two market principals. Um, who gave Brian Hughes a new sat now of somebody? Because it's, uh, I don't know when he was last seen at Kempton. He doesn't normally go that far away on his holidays. Um, Ronan. Yeah, I guess he was down to Kendon a couple of times to ride waiting patiently, but yeah, he's coming down. Um, I like him. I like his horse here. I have to say, um, Manella Dran, I think he should be favourite. Um, I'm much stronger in this race than I was in the previous race. I think uh, Pick Door, he has got a few holes in him. He, he, he's jumps erratically the last day again. Uh, he's fallen already over fences this season. And uh, he's find only there because he has a rating of 154 but i think that's a bit false over fences i'm not sure he deserves a rating of 154 maybe that's more to do with his hurdles rating so i know the two are quite aligned in britain um so officially he's he's seven pounds ahead of manila drama off level weights but i don't think that tells you the story i think this manila drama is a lot more solid he's, he's ran 10 times in his career and he's only been out of the top two once that was this year when he was fifth in the henry the eight uh behind edward stone that's hardly a disgrace really and just like he did last year once he was up to two and a half miles uh he's shown real improved form at haydock um he, he won over to a grade two there two and a half miles last month um seemed to be just idling in front and really picked up and, and went away again uh when, when the runners came to him there in the straight i think he's pretty solid uh, last season he was running over two miles over hurdles and doing quite well and then he went up to two and a half miles for a listed hurdle at Market Raisin, won well, and then finished second to my Drogo um, in the Mersey at, at Aintree. So I think he's done the same thing this season. They've started him off for two miles, brought him up to two and a half miles, and uh, that's what he's over here. And I think he should be favourite, to be honest. I, 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 fantastic lady. He's a nice mare for Nikki Henderson. She gets a bit of weight, but this looks a step up. And Miller's Bank is also a talented horse for um Alex Hales, but obviously has a bit of jumping frail. He's he should be a big worry. So Manila Drama, I just flip flop him with the favourites of Pick Dorhey, to be honest. I think he should be favourite and uh he looks a rock solid kind of run for your money as well. He always seems to run his race, so he'd do for me. So from a drama to a crisis, Barry. Yeah, he's a super bet. Five to two is the best you can get on him. Um ticks every single box. You mentioned Brian Hughes. The Kempton factor, Donald McCain, 28% strike rate in the last 14 days. He, he steps up in trip. There was an ex a genuine excuse for his run um, at um, Sandown behind Edward Stone. Lost the shoe. Jockey reported he lost the shoe over two months. Up to two and a half miles. This horse by Fleming's Furt. Um, he has a lot more upside than the likes of Pick Dory, who's had 20 races on the rules, Roland. Um you mentioned about Pick Dory holes in him. He's a rating of 154. As you said, he's disappointed last time. Um, he's had plenty of, I suppose, in and out attempts. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I just think Manella Drama has a lot more upside, uh, as I said. And I think up in trip at Kempton, good to soft ground will be fine for him. Um, and I like the horse he beat last time as well, Hardy DeSol at Haydock, albeit the ground was softer. But I really liked his effort last time. And five to two, um, I'd be saying he's a banker material for the weekend. Well, that's uh, strong words from a man who, well, no, we won't go there. Um, let's go to Mr. Coyle. Um, in your riding days, which of these ones would you want to be ridden? Oh, look. Um, you'd never have fallen off them, would you? No, if I got over the first time, it's going well, I used to think. Um, Look, um, yeah, I'm going to keep it fairly straightforward. I think Barry's probably right. I think this could be the bet of the weekend. Um, Brian Hughes, Don McCain are taking everything in front of them. They've stacks of winners. Horses are in great form. Um, yeah, I, I was this. I didn't didn't know he pulled a shoe. I was disappointed. 
Um, when he was fifth in that Edward Stone, I thought he flattened out very quick that day. But if he had a genuine excuse, he looked back to himself the last day. Um, yeah, I, I think at five to two, he's probably a bet. I do think, um, I think Nikki's horse will give him, he'll give him the most to think about. She's progressed nicely in handicap. She, look, she has a good bit to prove, improve. She's won, she won up 120, then 129. She's up official rating of 137. Okay, she gets a nice chunk of weight off them here. But she'd have to improve again. But she she could she could be on the up. And as the boys have said, um the Nichols horse has he's had plenty of excuses and that. So if he gets another one, he could be out in the first two, I think. So um no, I stick I will stick with Barry and I'll agree with him for once. He probably could be the bet of the weekend this time. One day you'll learn. Um let's move on to the Skybet Dovecut, the third of the races. And of course, this is a trial of the Skybet Supreme, which is shaping up to be the clash of the super super heavyweights and i've been to bully mullins this week to see his runners in it and i was also at nicky henderson seeing his and so somebody's gonna have to sprout wings and fly to rustle the top of the market here but the interesting thing is five of these one last time um i think we'll start with uh, the question for you uh, mr Cole, which i've heard come from your lips at closing time very frequently in recent months um, shall we have one more? There yeah, are two. Sometimes we were getting two or three. It was around the close of time was eight o'clock. <laughs> um, yeah, look, she is, he's the standout here, but you have to settle a little bit better. Um, he can be a bit headstrong in that. Um, the Moors are in flying form as well. They're one of the hot stables at the minute as well over there. They seem to be getting a winner every second day or that. Um, and these are these are the famous Goshen colours, I think, are they, Mike? They look very similar. So um, they could have a nice one. Look, uh, I don't think Anathan, if it wins here, is going to be um, going up the Supreme Market. But uh, no. um, probably one that will give it a race is the Skeleton Horse. Um, he won well the last day, beating the horse that Benny Burke won. But I don't, uh, to be honest, I... I haven't heard of any of them, so um, it wouldn't be a race for me. But uh, I did see that Gary Moore horse running, and if it does settle a bit better, it should take a lot of people. Ronan, yeah, um, I'm gonna leave Barry till last where he did all the storm. He's getting very, he must have something picked out here. He's getting very animated there. Well, he's agreed with Ronan once tonight, which is a first. I'm not sure Tom Tom has ever said, "Shall we have one more?" No. <laughs> I'd say the Irish equivalent would be one. He hasn't ever said it with his hand in his pocket. I'll tell you that for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, look, um, and I'm, it's, I find it crazy as well. Racing is, is mad. The, there's a horse in this race called, uh, given events of today, called Russian Ruler. You couldn't write it like it's just yeah. Like, <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> bit of money for bit of money for it as well. It's absolutely crazy, but um, Putin having the yeah. fucking kahunas on, go on, yeah. <laughs> he's probably um, got, he's probably, probably got all his bet 365 accounts shut down at this stage. I with the um, sanctions, yeah. Look, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I to be honest, yeah, I have very little insight to this form other than that gibberish. Um, shall we have one more? It was disappointing, obviously, in the uh, Constitution Hill Tallworth ran no sort of race there, but possibly showed that he's that wasn't as true running last time. Um, I think they're half talking about the Supreme if he goes and wins here, he will need to win here, I'd say. Um, just the way that British form doesn't look. The strongest outside of obviously Constitution and John Bond, and these are look 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 like a bit of a motley crew. To be honest, with you. I was looking through some of the, the runs earlier on, and they're, they they all seem to be close closely enough matched. Um, ICO is interesting. Though, the Nichols have come here and, and getting the weight that that could put the the juvenile form. Could you give you a good look into that? Um, ICO was well beaten by Pipe Piper, Cheltenham last time, and uh, he's a four year old in here getting the weight, which uh, might give you a bit of a line into that sort of form. But, it's not no bet race for me. I think shall, shall we have one more? It's probably the right favourite and, and probably end up winning. Okay, just a reminder, if you haven't so far, click on that button, the one that is marked subscribe. You, you're listening to some unique content and it's with you every week on champ.ie. We're trying to make racing great again. 
And still to come is Jordan Gainford talking about the Bobby Joe chase at Ferry House on Saturday. And that is the big conditions chase. The big handicap on Saturday is this 337 at Kempton, 150,000 in the pot, field of 14, and uh, as open as you like with the Welsh Raider and Sam on the day England play Wales at Twickenham just down the road, hoping that uh, he can lead the Coombe Rondas afterwards. Um, Ronan, this, this may not be the best quality renewal, but to my eyes, it's one of the most competitive. Absolutely, Mike. Uh, you have to explain that Ansam reference there. What's Ansam to do with Wales? Coombe Ronda is bread of heaven, um, oh. which is sung by the Welsh. And if, the, if you are a, a visiting football sub rugby supporter at, Car at uh, the National Stadium in Cardiff and Coombe Ronda starts after 15 minutes, you're in the muck. I see. And I see. I'm sure that all the Welshmen are clearing their voices to sing umpteen verses of the Coombe Ronda just down the road at Twickenham. And if they had the big winner here, who knows, they might sing it as well. Does that answer your question? They are very you know, you, you, in get here on Campus Day, you get winners and you end the night better informed. What more could you want? <laughs> All right, away you go. Uh, yeah, where else would you get that sort of trivia only champ, the champ that he podcast? Yeah, look, this is the first decent race I think we talked about from a betting point. Well, um, some of Roman's sentences have been longer than Judge Jeffries tonight, and I think he's gonna try and fix his Wi Fi. Nice short word, that Wi-Fi, isn't it? Um, a few short words now from uh, Mr. Doyle. Big breakaway. I, do, do you know what? Do you know what? I, in, in terms of this race, and Sam obviously, um, and and Phoenix Wade, the form ties in a little bit. Um, he's a, he's a progressive horse, um, and he he you know he's he's the worthy favourite in here, and Sam uh, for Evan Evan Williams, Adam Wedge, uh, but there's lots in here with maybe the likes of the Ultima in mind. This is the scene of, of this was a fantastic run um, in the at Kempton in, in the Kinnestar Novice behind Shan Blue. Um, he's in here off 147. Tizard, stable form, Brennan Powell, the combination um, seems to be on fire at the moment. 21% uh, strike rate for Colin Tizard. Uh, and this horse, you know, if you were to tell Colin Tizard two years ago that, that the big breakaway would be rated 147 as a as, as a seven-year-old, he probably would have laughed at you. So um, he'd be certainly, like, he's the juice in that price. Um, and, you know, tongue strap, cheek pieces on for the first time. Um, big chance here, Mike Vince, big chance. Now, go on, make my night, Tommy. Say you agree with him. No chance. Uh, second and two, beaten out of sight by Shanty House. Okay, you ran well the last time, but... He's a lot. He's a lot left to prove. Okay, you could have been good hearts to be taught at one stage, but he's a lot to prove. I couldn't. Sorry, boys. And even I do agree. Uh, Brendan Powell and Colin Tizard are on fire lately. To be a combination that you always keep an eye on. During the days, but uh, no, not for me. He the horse is a lot to prove. The one I like too in it. Um, yeah, and Sam deserves to be favoured, but I think Phoenix Way is going to reverse the form. On one reason, um, on the last day, I was saying combinations, but Kevin Brogan is one of the best young jockeys in, in England, I think, at the minute. Um, I know he's he's leading away on the conditional, but he I know, he still claims three, but to me, he's he's taken like five or seven early off a horse. I just think he's riding very well at the minute. Um, he In them boys' races, he makes the others look very, very ordinary, them boys that are riding over there. Um, he rode this horse the last day and he bet a good yard stick in Fanny and Desterval, um, of Venetia Williams. So the horse is in good form. Harry Fry is starting to get a few winners on the board again. Um, I think he's had two out of ten in the last 14 days or something. Does he so stay, he, Tom? Uh, I think he I seems think to he travel, it seems, it seems to travel into his races. He's, he's obviously yeah, look, had wind surgery as well. It's if you're going to get it, it's it's a very three mile. It's a very easy three mile around Kempton. You have to realise as well. Um, the track, of course, is not dissimilar to Ascot. Very well yeah. last time. Yeah. Um, right handed. But, but I just think, um, yeah, look, horse in form, stable in form. But it, for me, it's the jockey to get the claim three off him as well. 
Um, he he's the young he's the young he's the young Irishman as we all know, but he's definitely making a big name for himself at the minute over in England. And um, he's probably going to win the conditional jockeys champion as well championship as we all know. Um, so I think at ten to one he's a great bet. And just one down at the bottom, and um, he always kind of runs his race, but he never wins. Is Beachtown of the Skeletons always runs a good race? Okay, he's a lot to find at the lab, that cool Cody race, uh, the Labricks, was it? Um, he had a he was beaten a long way in that, but he's given two good accounts of himself the last twice finishing second, and the Skeletons they're banging in the winners as well as we know. Um, so he could he could run a nice price. He could run a nice race at a big price. Um, I'm sure you'll probably get four places in most big firms for this. But I have to think, um, I think the Irish boys have, have let this one slip. It's a first prize of nearly eight, over 80,000. And to be honest, if that was on in Nace now on Saturday or on Sunday, it would be one hell of a handicap over in Ireland. Where do you think them, them few horses at the top of the market, do you think they'd be at the top of the market with a good Irish handicap, like a Paddy Power or something? With that sort of money, I think the Irish kind of have let this one slip. I'm surprised if you haven't targeted with that kind of prize money and only 14 runners. Not even, not even a full field for 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 a prize like that is, I think, a scandalous, really, to be honest. Exactly so, the same as hand glass. So, well, a couple of weeks ago with the um, yeah. with the bet for her, hurdle, which yeah. didn't fill. Like if if that was if that was in Ireland, you would have had 60, 70 entries. There'd be boys battling it out. There'd be three reserves that have to come in for that sort of money. And, and JP would have eight or nine in. Yeah, it? he would, but but he puts his money into his game, so he deserves it. He's got good exactly. enough to run. That need to um, need to end the rant. Sorry, and um, <laughs> and, 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 and calm it down by these words of Ronan. Hopefully, if I hold these two wires together, does that mean we can talk to you? <laughs> yeah, I'll go. I'll go quickly. Uh, I'm, I do. I, I do like the big breakaway. I have to say, um, I, I what Barry said. He's coming back to the course and distance. He won over, uh, or an early second in the Grade One. Um, look, not the idea to start the season, but I think they put him away. Uh, worked on his jumping, maybe uh, got him, got him back to form. And I thought he ran a real cracking race back over hurdles at the last day. He's going to be better over fences, and I have to say, 147. I think to to his arts must have think, if uh, as Barry said, if you told him that after whatever seven or eight runs that he'd still be rated 147, I think they'd um they'd have taken that all day long. He's he's he, he the Tizards have a good record in this race as well. They won it um twice in the last six years or so, um and they've had a couple of thirds as well. So I'm I'm sure they've probably earmarked this race. Come back over hurdles for a little spin at Newbury, and then come back here um, with Brendan Powell riding out of his skin as well. So the big breakaway for me, yeah, he'd be one of the best of the weekend. You have a complete freedom of the parish. We want to go to something at Fairy House. If you really are brave, and you're the antithesis of Tommy Coyle, you can go to the Hyder at Newcastle. Um, any race you help yourself, but um, also remember that we are going to hear. In fact, let's do it now. Let's hear now. Uh, before we ask the lads, because then maybe we we'll want to talk briefly about the race from our special guest. Um, there's four runners only in it, which is slightly disappointing, but it's a cracking race. The Bobby Joe at Fairy House on Saturday. Any second now, of course, has to run in the race to qualify uh, for the Grand National because he hasn't run in the steeplechase in a year. So quite clearly that's important for them. And Jordan's in the field as well. Let's hear from him ahead of... The Bobby Joe Chase. Delighted to be joined by Jordan Gainford on the Champ the D podcast, episode number 14 of the season. Jordan, it's been a fantastic season for you. You're chasing the likes of Rachel Blackmore with 44 winners. You're going great guns. Yeah, no, great. Um, look at um, before I start, I have great people around me, you know, um, starting in Garden there two years ago. Um, since since I walked in the gate there, he's looked after me very well and uh, picked up some great outside rides and uh, the great agent, Gary Cribben, um rode for great owners, great people and uh, no, it's, it's been unbelievable. Back back to today, the, the Michael Purcell at um, Turles, obviously the gaffer is a horse. He's had a couple of starts now over hurdles. Today was today was a step in the right direction, you rode him. It was indeed, yeah. Um, the ground with a lovely big corner. He's a big, he's a big horse, and uh, 
he, uh, he, his point of point form actually worked out very, very well. Um, he was fourth for Benny Walsh. Uh, the first, the first three home, I think the second horse is, is a really good horse in England uh, for Donald McCain, and the third horse has won plenty since. But uh, no, look, he's definitely going the right direction. Um, he had a good run the last day over a further trip, and uh, in Torless, and uh, I actually rang David the day before I rode this lad, and he said to, to keep it simple. Um, he thought he thought he gave him a great ride the last day, but uh, he just missed it up maybe the second last, and this sort of got away from down the hill, and it can happen in Torless, I suppose. But um, no, luckily he was good uh, for the brought us a good gallop, and uh, in fairness to him, off the bend, he, he stuck his neck out and uh, winged the last two, and. Uh, he actually, he, he battled on horse came beside him and when he was in front crossing the line and on his own, he, he was idling. So it just shows he he probably plenty left in his tank. Yeah, and I suppose for, for a five-year-old, obviously he's, he's had five runs now over hurdles. Uh, he's entered, uh, as of yesterday, of course, in the Martin Pipe. Do you think he's a contender? Look, um, he, uh, he, he, as he showed today, he, the, the trip suits him. Um, look, if the, if the ground is... Uh, it's a bit of a cold inner side, uh, I'd say it suits him, but look at that, that, that work has left up the garden and uh, we're, we're there to ride the horses and uh, very lucky to get to ride on today. Good stuff. And speaking of garden, obviously this weekend, big weekend coming up um, at Fairy House, of course, the Bobby Joe Chase. Escari, a 10 year riding the big one. Um, you must be excited. Yeah, look, brilliant. Um, look at him just yesterday, he ran a really good race. Um, the quality was, was unbelievable of the race and he finished, I think, his day. Um, his bleakers on him first time now. Um, four runners, I think he's getting getting eight pound off 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 um Ted's horse and Willie's horse. So uh, oh look, he, he hopefully he'll be he'll be uh, bang there and uh, he's in good order at home and doing his work well. So no, looking forward to. Him. Yeah, you mentioned the TS days. Obviously, last year, if you look at the bare form at a national hunt chase, Sir Galvin was um he was giving him a race um at at Cheltenham. If he comes back to that type of form, would you be hopeful of a big run? Yeah, definitely. Look, he wasn't too far behind him, and it just shows what he, he went on to do. So, no, look, Harts in good form. Gardens Harts are, are, are great form at the minute as well. So, it's it, we definitely want to look forward to Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. Another one then as well, of course, you're riding in for Garden as well. Ebisari uh, was, yeah. was very impressive, wasn't he, on, on first start um, against Adam and Lee Chosen, who's come out, I suppose, and backed up the form. Um, thoughts on him ahead of the weekend? Yeah, um, did a piece of work yesterday, um, or, or one of the days, I'm not sure now, but um, no, he, he, he did his work well, he's a, he's a cheery type of horse, um, won very well in Cork, he, he was very impressive, um, but no, look, it's, it's, a, it's a nice little race, Garden has uh, two in it, um, he break the side, he's a good horse in his own right, and uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see now what happened, it's, it's a nice race on paper. Yeah, obviously you can, an Aga Khan horse uh, by... Love the Vega, who came from Michael Halfords. Is he a horse that, um, like, what way in terms of the ground? Like, it's obviously soft to heavy. Do you think maybe the ground would be? What's your thoughts on the ground? Yeah, look, look, I, I think it'll be nice. He, uh, it was soft. I think it was soft in Cork day one, and uh, you know he's a speedy little horse. And uh, when it comes down to the business, it's short in Cork that he can stick his head out and battle as well. So. No, he, he's a he's a nice, cheerful type of horse, and uh, if he puts his foot forward again, and uh, he produces that run, he, he hopefully will be bang there. Yeah, word for Ard Hill. Ard Hill, yeah, uh, look, he was very good in England. Um, he's a nice, he's a lightweight, and he's back. Um, but yeah, we're hoping for a big run as well. Yeah, I just wanted to mention just a couple of other big ones, obviously that you've rode this season. Um, Jordan Tupu. Um, obviously, you rode him when he won, I suppose, at, at Limerick on, on, on Deep Brown. He's come out and really stepped forward again um, at Gorham Park. What was your thoughts on him? Yeah, look, he's an improving horse all the time. He's, uh, his, his form is very good. Um, he's only a five-year-old. I think he's, he's, he's third in the betting now in the champion hurdle. But um, no, look, he's, he's a real improver. I spoke to Robbie the other day. He was delighted with him after after Gordon it, it shows that he could he can suit every type of condition and uh, for a horse that's still a light frame and uh, still only five as I said he uh, I think there's a lot of improvement in him and uh, he definitely won't disgrace himself in the champion hurdle and uh, he, was, he was very lucky to, to sit on him in um, in Limerick and uh, the, the boot that he showed in that ground in in, in Gorn would uh, would really light you up you know what I mean um, he's, yeah he's a lovely horse going forward 
Yeah, well, one thing that struck me about him as well, as well as obviously he's had uh, five runs um, over hurdles now at this stage. Four of his five wins have come on, you know, I suppose heavy or soft. Um, from from when you rode him in Limerick, what, what was your thoughts in terms of ground? Do you think that's key to him or could he be better on even better ground? I think uh, maybe maybe a bit better on better ground. You know, as I said, he's a light frame of horse, but um, his sire and uh, and the way he, he did he did all his performance in that ground, like you would have to say he likes it as well. But um, look, uh, I think I think he's loads of class about him. Um, again, the way the way he quickens in that ground is unreal. Um, look, we went steady around Limerick. It wasn't the plan to make it that day, and uh, that there I got by me and on a classy horse. And in fairness to him. When it comes down to the business, the last, last he stuck out his head and showed the bit of wood he had. So, okay, if, if it comes up with a nice coat and match, or, or it'll go, to, I don't know what, what the decision will be, but he, I think he definitely won't disgrace himself. And uh, it'll, be, it'll be great for, for Rob Core as well, their big supporters mm-hmm. of the game. They've been very good to me and uh, very good to Gardner. So, no, it'll be brilliant. Must be majorly exciting, obviously, for the stable to have the horse now with, with a real chance in the championship. Yeah, exactly. Um, look, I don't know what the, what the plan is with, with him or ours on here. Um, I know they're both in it, but um, no, whichever whichever runs or if both run, it'll be very exciting. Yeah, yeah another one then, just finally, uh, that you did ride this season, obviously, and it's come out. Um, and won, of course, at Navin uh, earlier in, in, in the week, obviously. Jordan, you rode for Luke Delan when he rode, but when he, when he finished behind Master Max Shee. This horse is a horse could be improving, is he? He is, definitely. Um Okay, he was a, he was a, he was a, you could say he was a lucky in Limerick, but uh, the winner was good. Um, I thought uh, looking back on the race, Ian was, Ian was a real class act on Mass Marshy that day. Um, but uh, no look, Mass Marshy went on and finished second behind Gallop in the Champs in um in Leopardstown, and uh, no, my lad didn't didn't uh, didn't didn't run a run a bad race. Look, he was just very unlucky, he got knocked on the line, but um. I suppose the trip in this and uh, the ground was I think was lively enough that day. But uh, stepping up to three miles deep ground again in Navin, he really showed the class he has and uh, he stuck out his neck there after the last, you know, beacon edge come up beside him there and he, he showed he, he got it out. So look, it'll be interesting to see what Garden goes for with him at the um, at the festival and Mike and Lady make up their minds, but no He's a real class act and I think uh, he's only improving, you know, he's only after having a few runs over fences and uh, yeah, he had a little, little uh, setback but in his time, but look, he's a class act, and uh, again, he's just filling out with age and time. Yeah, Mike, so I'll just, I'll just mention a few on Saturday. One at Fairy House in the Grade 3 Juvenile Race um, at 2 o'clock. A um, couple in here, maybe with the Boodles in mind. A um, couple of horses in here uh, on the floor for, for Gavin Cromwell, a Caroline Ebisari. Uh, all the horses, I think, will line up in the Boodles at Cheltenham including the winner of this race, I think, which will be Prairie Dancer. Hasn't won over hurdles yet, had 11 starts on the flat um, and had achieved a rating of 86, um, but was a big eye catcher, um, I thought, the last day at Fairy House behind Flame Bearer. Uh, finished third, jumped well. Um, jockey JJ Slevin wasn't too hard on him. He jumps well, but he was... He was um, I suppose he wasn't exactly in, in a position to, to go and win the race, I felt. Um, and he's just a horse that I've been keeping an eye on. Um, I think he probably will need to win to, to get into the Boodles um, or run quite well. I, 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 I would fancy him to win here at the weekend. There's no prices up. But Prairie Dancer, um, I think, has um, the ability to go and win a race like this. Um, and the other one I want to mention, Mike, is in the Handicap Chase. Um, the leading the field Handicap Chase which is the 425 at Newcastle. There is prices in for this race, and I've been just waiting for this horse to step up and trip. Do your job. Michael Scudamore. Um, Luca, Luca Morgan is claiming three here. Um, last time finished behind third time, Lucky. Um, has ran in some good company this season, uh, and I've been just waiting for him to step up and trip. Um, ran over the minimum trip um, a couple of times. And uh, he's a big, scopy individual. The BC is his market rival in here. He pulled up last time. He's been in and out. Um, he's back in trip here. Uh, but this horse is very interesting going up in trip. Four starts over fences so far. Jumps very well. Um, you know, beaten by Edward Stone in third time. Lucky is no disgrace. Um, and I don't think the last time he was... 
I suppose, given an overly hard time. So I think he'll go win here on his handicap chase debut. That's do your job. Five to two is a very good price, I believe. And so on to Ronan. Yeah, um, not, nothing for me elsewhere at Ferry House. Um, I'll give a quick shout down in Riyadh, uh, the old Saudi Cup meeting down there. Uh, <coughs> got three Irish horses going in the Red Sea turf handicap for two and a half million there. Um, uh, I'll be tuning into that during the day. I uh, don't think it's the best weekend of jump ra- jumps race ask- racing. Um, so, uh, Sonny Boy Liston's favourite there for Johnny Murta. Um, I was, did, had Tony Mullins for a big interview last uh, week, so... Um, uh, really hoping Princess Zoe runs well. I think she will. She's a big price. She's eight to one, probably on account of the quick ground. But Tony and uh, team there seem to think that uh, she can handle that quick ground down there, uh, like she did in the Ascot Gold Cup. So wouldn't put anyone off back on her. And if you're run- wondering why there's no horses for the champion hurdles and and hurdles in England and Ireland, it's because there's meetings like this on. There's uh, as Tony said to me, I could be running Princess Zoe for ninety thousand at Cheltenham, or I could be running for two and a half million here. So it just goes to show you. But uh, that race at two oh five um, on Saturday, so a nice time for people are if people are wondering um, when it's on and when they can tune in. They're the only three horses, Irish horses, running at the meeting. Next to Paul. Yeah, um, just a couple. There's a good handicap um, in Fairy House on Saturday. Um, one interesting is the Henry de Bromhead back, Irascible. Um, he had a couple of nice runs behind Appreciators. Um, he's been off for a year. Comes in off America 137. Um, be interesting to see, does he still have a bit of fire in the belly? Um, also in that race, Enniscary, um, if to give a mention to Barry Connell, his horses are flying at the minute. I think he's had three winners in the last three days of Irish racing and um, I think he's three out of four in the last two weeks or whatever so his his stable is very hot so he could be one to look out for and just one down at the bottom uh, Arthur Moore's horse Carrick Carrick Sam I think he's called and um, he pulled off a bit of a gamble in Ferry House the last day and um, won well in the debt so that's a that's a tricky little handicap there that's that's there, and there's three horses that will be going well. I think Carl Thornton will win the same handicap there, whereas Frankie, he seems to have exploited his chase and his hurdle mark. I'd say he's still on the good mark, and um, so he should take a beat, bit of beating in the two mile seven. And um, I think Borough Saint, um, he'll get back on the winning trail, heading for Aintree in the Bobby Jones. Well. So it's it's not a bad card for for Saturday in Ferry House. I think he's seen so track. That's the only thing. That's why it's spoiled on it. But uh, ground will be soft. But um, it shouldn't be a bad day out. No, and of course it is. Uh, any second now for Cheltenham, he's got to he's got to run in the race. But there are plenty of opportunities uh, to see horses for the future on that card. So we move straight on, and the time has come to put together your five casts. More of these to be given away, uh, Mike Vince, just to, to mention. More um, of the wonderful today. Ronan Groom books. I'm looking forward to getting mine. So the winner yeah. of this week, Mike Vince, is going to get another one sent out. Ronan Groom is um, in charge of the postage. And, um, yeah, so Ronan help yourself Groom out. Ronan Groom at the canteen, more like it. <laughs> <laughs> and hardly wait the excitement. But I hope it's, it, it is a great read. And Ronan and his team... Um, I salute for all their hard work on it. Straight and to page course. 54, Mike Vince. Look, just, just a bit of a plug. Here. Yeah, no, by the time I got to page 53, I had the Obscene Publication squatted and they removed my copy. Right, we need to go down this and and, and, and quickly down it. So I'm going to go round the, the, the table. Just need each of your five, but we'll do them race by race. Uh, Kempton 150, Barry Doyle. Kempton 150, um... 150 at Kempton, Mike Vince. Remind me, which Adonis. race is this? Adonis. The, Ad- the Adonis. Sorry, good man, Mr. Golden Groom. Jim Williams' horse. Remind me of the name. Mocha Maca de Vassi each way. I'm not going to French. I never went to school. Night salute. You learn these things, you know. Ronan never went to school. That's the uh, that's the first one. And when Tommy Cole went to school, he learned his tables like a good boy. You know, evens, 11 to 10, 6 to 5, 5 to 4. You can say him by the time he was 5. Um, you're 150 at Kempton. Great start. All right, 225 for Pendle. Mine, by the way, is, I'm afraid I'm going to go against the, you in that first race. 
I think that uh, Pleasant Land might be good enough to win first time out. Uh, let's go to race two and go the other way around. Tommy. Manila Drama. Ronan. Manila Drama. Barry. Manila Drama, five to two, nap of the weekend. Well, I think Fantastic Lady getting weight might just um, cause a shock. Uh, three o'clock with Duff Cut. Um, running group. Shall we have one more? What a good idea. Barry. I'm, I'm, I'm actually reversing my decision. I'm going back. Shall we have one more? I think we'll win. And probably it's still value on the price. TC? Yeah, same as. Shall we have one more? I'm afraid to say that is unanimous, so that means that gets beat. <laughs> it's all four of us on it here. Um, 335, uh, the big handicap, Barry. The big breakaway, 15 to 2, Mike, NB. Uh, Thomas. Phoenix, right? Uh, Ronan. The big breakaway. And uh, for me, the big breakaway, well, it was my horse to follow last year. A lot of good it did me, and I've just about had the last of the abuse, courtesy of Mr. Doyle. And now you come to your free throw, as it were. Um, you can make up your minds now about one other horse. The only um, caveat is it has to run on Saturday. Barry. Make racing great again. You should do your job, Mike Vince. Subscribe to the channel. Do your job. Newcastle, five to two. And what was the yeah. name of the horse? Do your job. You should do your job. <laughs> <laughs> 16.25, Mike Vince, 5-2. to two. Do your job. Mr. Coyle? Um, John Cannon looks to have found a, a very suitable opportunity in the main hurdle of Barry House, so John Cannon. Right, this is going. Somebody else will be doing my job. Um, Ronan? Uh, 3.15, Newcastle, the Eider Chase, and going for History of Fashion. And I'm going to go to Chepstow, 4 o'clock. Henry Daly and Brittany Ladd in a staying handicap chase. So that is that. Our special thanks go to Jordan Gainford, our special guest. And the three wise men will be back from their holidays next week. If not, these three will be back. And uh, thanks go to Thomas Coyle, the legend that is, who I mentioned, Ronan Groom and Barry Doyle from all the champ.ie team. The best of luck with your Saturday tips. Please, two things. Subscribe. Let's make racing great again. And also, get those five casts in. <laughs> and Mike Vince. You Mike, have been warned. Mike Vince, next week, tell the listeners what's happening next Thursday night. Now, next we Thursday, we will publicise it. Fingers crossed, but I get back in time. It will be the Cheltenham preview. The one you've all been waiting for. And now the management team will decide who actually is um, up for selection for that. We might have a cast of thousands. <laughs> or, there, or then again, we might not. And um, if Barry Daw doesn't tip an urge, I mean, I'm, I'm going home. <laughs> All the best to everybody, and we'll see you next week. It's an argument opening up a clear advantage at the closing stages. A breath of fresh air over fences is going to stay at the helm of the two mind offices. An argument by...